Hey Art Snaggers, welcome or welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, or in case you're new here, my name is Roxanne, also known as Bi Bun, and I'm a mixed media artist and illustrator. This month's box was packed with some pretty unique items, and one in particular that's truly the star of the show. For the June Art Snacks Challenge, I thought it might be a good time to get back to some basics, and I'm talking about the five elements of shading. Woo, I'm having art school flashbacks already. Stay tuned for a crash course right now, because this is the Art Snacks Box Breakdown. Welcome back to another Box Breakdown, the monthly video series where we take a closer look at some of the supplies and techniques found in the latest Art Snacks box. And remember, if you see this icon appear on your screen, it means it's an Art Snacks Plus item. As I've already revealed, we got a sweet set of soft pastels in the June box. Now, I'll admit, chalk pastel is not my strongest medium, but I'm gonna use that as an opportunity to practice some basics. So while keeping things simple and concentrating on shading, I'll even bring in a little Jeff Koons for some inspiration. You'll see what I mean in just a bit, but why don't we go ahead and get started, shall we? Before I get going with those pastels, I wanna get my substrate and sketch ready. So first, I'm grabbing the Van Gogh Black Watercolor Paper Pad. I'm pretty sure this is my first time encountering black watercolor paper, and this brand new product really delivers. This pad has got 12 sheets of cold pressed paper with a fine grain texture. You can use it with metallic or opaque supplies, both wet and dry. So this sturdy 360 GSM paper will pair well with the other items from this month's box. With my paper ready, I'm now reaching for our next item to get sketching. This is the Zebra Zensations Graphics Technical Pencil. This pencil has got a sleek barrel with a narrow lead sleeve, ideal for any kind of sketching. We all got different lead sizes too, which you can discover on the colored band or the cap where there's also a refillable eraser. Before I start drawing, I want to explain that you're going to see me bouncing between two different things in this video. I'll be working on our black paper to create a larger piece of artwork while also doing a smaller demo on some white paper too. On the white paper, I'll be creating a sphere to help demonstrate how to shade a round object. You'll see me toggle between these two artworks as we explore the five elements of shading. Starting on the white watercolor paper from a previous Art Snacks box, I'm gonna sketch out my sphere. When drawing a sphere, you wanna keep things loose and try to use your whole arm until you nail down that circle shape. Before I can begin shading, let's also determine the direction of our light source, add a little horizon line, and create an outline for a cast shadow. Like your sphere, sketch your cast shadow with a loose hand to create an ellipse. Over on my black paper, I'll be creating artwork in a similar manner, but this time sketching up a balloon dog. An easy way to look at this object is just a series of ellipses arranged together. With black paper, it's nice to create something that's fun to shade, so something reflective or round, so a balloon dog a la Jeff Koons really fits the bill. To finish off my sketch, I'll also add a playful outline of a cast shadow. Now it's time to get some color down. Meet the Rembrandt Soft Pastels. This set of five has got super vibrant and intense color that is very light fast. They're also creamy to apply thanks to the extra fine clay they're produced with meaning it's easy to use for layering techniques, which is exactly what we'll be doing. A whole lot of it, in fact. Starting on my sphere, I'll grab the lightest shade of blue to put down a base color. When it comes to shading, you always wanna work light to dark and slowly build things up. On my balloon dog, I'll use the same shade to first outline my sketch, just to see where things overlap. I'll then lay down a base coat of color. With some base color down, I'll then come in with the next two shades of chalk pastel to start to build up my midtone. A midtone or half tone is a transition value as the shape of the object moves away from its light source. This area I'm avoiding here is my highlight or the area most exposed to my light source. On white paper, I can naturally create a highlight with some negative space and using the paper itself. With a midtone on my sphere, I'll now repeat this over on my balloon dog. Up until this point, I've simply been layering the chalk pastel onto my paper, but now I wanna blend things together. For this, I'm grabbing our next item, the Royal and Langnickel Artist Chamois. This piece of natural leather is soft, pliable, and absorbent, so you can smoothly mix all this chalk color together. I like to wrap the chamois around my finger and then gently blend. Blending from light to dark, I'll begin in the highlight area and then work outward. Because of how soft these pastels are, it doesn't take a lot of pressure to blend things together. Mm -hmm. 
Once things are blended in, I'll then reinforce some highlight areas with more color. When working on black paper, this is something you may have to do from time to time, because unlike working on white paper, it's something you have to add in versus just using negative space. I'm now gonna come back in with a second pass of chalk pastel. And since I'll be working in smaller areas, I'll do a second round of blending using a Q-tip. And that's just a personal preference. Just when you think I'm done shading, we really only just begun. In fact, I'll be using our next two items to build up a core shadow. Now I'll explain what that means in a moment, but first let's meet our next supply. This is the General's Multi Pastel Chalk Pencil. It's quite literally chalk pastel, but in a pencil form. It's pigment packed, blendable, and smooth to put down. This chalk pencil is a great way to blend in another color with your chalk pastel set. And with this darker blue hue, it's just the thing I need to begin to build up my core shadow. A core shadow is the darkest area on an object as it's the furthest or least affected by its light source. So it looks like we've got one more shade of blue to add in, and this time, it's a colored pencil. This is the Krita Color Mega Color Pencil. This chunky pencil has got a break resistant core that puts down really pigmented color. And with how thick this thing is, you can imagine how long it's gonna last you. Now this blue color I got is really dark, so it's not gonna show up a whole lot on the black paper, but it does show up on top of the chalk pastel. Something else you'll notice is that I'm not taking this color pencil all the way to the edge of the sphere. And what that's doing is leaving me a little bit of a reflected highlight. And this is the fourth element of shading. Right after my core shadow, just before the end of an object, is a reflected highlight. And this is a highlight that's caused by indirect light, or light bouncing off of another object. In this case, the ground. I'll then repeat this same process over on our balloon dog. With my shading pretty much in, whew, our next item is something that Art Snacks had been teasing on social media. Check out the Edding 1200 Metallic Color Pen. This pen has opaque and iridescent ink that's really gonna pop on your black watercolor paper. Now I'll come back to the sphere in a moment, but for right now, I wanna have some fun with this pen on the black paper. First, I'll use it to create a delicate outline, giving things a cool kind of glow look. Then I'll pair it with the lightest chalk pastel shade to reinforce areas of highlight throughout. Something else about this metallic pen is that the ink is water-based, so you can fan it out with a wet brush. Being that I'm working on watercolor paper, I couldn't resist using it to fill in my cast shadow. And that brings us to our fifth element of shading. It's pretty obvious, but a cast shadow is the shadow cast by the object itself. You'll notice I'm concentrating the ink closest to the object because that's where the shadow will be the darkest. It then becomes lighter as it moves away. The metallic on the black paper is actually kind of a reverse cast shadow thing happening, but you'll see what I mean more on the sphere. We've come a long way with all that layering and blending we've been doing, but we've got just one more item to help finish things off. Which leads us to our last supply from the Arts Next Plus box, the Kiritake Nihondate Kabura Fuji Brush Pen number 55. Woo, that's a doozy, but this pen is pretty awesome. This double-sided brush pen, originally built for calligraphy, features a firm, fine point on one side and a flexible rubber brush tip on the other. Using the brush tip, I'll first use this to clean up my edges. This will help cover up any remaining chalk smears and make the outline of the balloon dog a bit crisper. Like our metallic pen, this brush pen also has water-based ink, so I can use this in my cast shadows alongside a wet paintbrush. And don't worry, I didn't forget about the sphere on the white paper, which now needs a cast shadow. Here, I'll apply the ink closest to the sphere and then fan it out with a wet brush. And with that cast shadow in place, you can now really see all five elements of shading in action. The highlight, mid-tone, core shadow, reflected highlight, and cast shadow. To finish up my balloon dog, I'll beef up my cast shadow using the same technique. And there you have it guys, the June Art Snacks box. If you're new to Art Snacks and want to start getting your supplies, there's a link down below where you can sign up. Of course, while you're here, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe for future box breakdowns, join us for free over on Mix, and follow Art Snacks on social media. This has been another Art Snacks box breakdown, and I'll see you all next month. Bye!